Uh, thanks for coming to my presentation, everyone. Uh, my name is Ben, and uh, I'm going to talk to you about security. Uh, so just a uh, you know, quick little overview, just in case you're not familiar with who uh, Sukuri is. It's uh, who I work for. Uh, we're a globally distributed website security team. Uh, we're in about uh, 22 different countries. We have people working from all over the world. Uh, we clean and protect websites with a website, antivirus, and firewall. And um, we're, we don't actually just work with uh, WordPress, but we work with pretty much any uh, website. So we do Magento e-commerce sites, Joomla, even uh, Microsoft ASP sites, ModX. Pretty much, uh, if it's an infected website, you know, we'll figure it out. We'll clean it. We'll 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 do it. So, uh, also, uh, in case, hey, just a quick overview of uh, who I am. Uh, my name is Ben. I am a remediation lead and a security analyst. Uh, I'm the, one of the guys that goes in and actually cleans up the websites when they're infected. Um, I've been working for Sukuri for like two years. Uh, I'm from Victoria. Uh, a couple of my colleagues also from Victoria are giving presentations this weekend too, so I suggest you check those out. Um, and I'm a security online privacy geek, of course, and uh, when I'm not working, I like to produce music, hang out with my cat, and skateboard. Uh, so now that we got all that out of the way, um, building a better security posture. Um, so first of all, I'd like to talk a little bit about why security matters in the first place. Um, so a couple of uh, months ago, I was talking to a guy that I knew, uh, and he was telling me about this martial arts studio that he has in downtown Victoria. And uh, he was saying that he built a website for it and asked me to check it out. And I said, great, I love websites, I'll, I'll do that. So I, uh, I logged on and I checked it out, and it was a really nice website. Um, he had spent a lot of time working on it. He had a really nice theme, good content, lots of like martial arts sword stuff, and it was really cool. Uh, and then as I, as I tend to do, I decided to uh, scan this website with our uh, site check tool for Sukuri. That, and it's a free tool online. You can scan your site with it for malware. Uh, it's not a perfect tool, but uh, you know, it's a really helpful thing to have in your arsenal for security. And because uh, I, I wanted to know, like, well, who's his hosting provider? What version of WordPress is he using? Like, what kind of uh, server is he running? And uh, so it like scans the site, and all of a sudden it comes up with this big red warning, like, warning, malware has been detected on this website. And I said, oh man, and I I looked at it, and yeah, sure enough, Buddy's website had been compromised. Um, so later that day, he comes to me and he's like, hey, what'd you think about my website? And I said, well, I thought your site was great, but there's a small problem. It's, it's actually infected with, <laughs> with malware. And he said, what? What do I do? I didn't even know this was possible. And I said, don't worry, man. You're talking to the right guy. I got your back. <laughs> so I, uh, I went ahead and I, I cleaned it up for him. He was really appreciative. Uh, he, he appreciated it a lot. Um, but what I thought was really interesting about that case was that he had no idea that his site was infected. And it wasn't until I had given it a scan and checked it out that, that he knew. And who knows how long that bad code had, had been on his site for, right? Um, and it goes to show that without proper monitoring and, and a good, you know, which is part of developing a good security posture, being aware of this stuff and being educated, um, you know, things can go by undetected for a really long time. Um, and I actually work with some clients that they ask me, like, who, who hacked my site? When did this happen? Like, how did they do this? And, you know, these are sometimes difficult questions to answer. Um, but sometimes I'll check it out and I'm like, dude, your site was infected like two years ago. It's been misused ever since. And like, they only started realizing it recently, right? Um, so uh, the fact of the matter is that all websites do get attacked. Um, you don't have to be a big you know, company or a really big you know, important website for, for you to get attacked. It, it will happen. Um, now, that doesn't mean that your site's going to get compromised necessarily, but all websites are targets, right? And as a site owner, you are responsible for your, your website. That's your space on the internet. Um, and your visitors trust you, right? There's a bond there. The reason why they keep going back to your website to see your content and to check it out is because there's, there's a bond of trust there. And if that's broken, if there's ever a security issue, if your visitors get infected from visiting your site, that trust can be broken. And you need to actively maintain that as a site owner to protect yourself, to protect your visitors, and to protect the tremendous amount of hard work that you've put into your, your site, right? Um, so <clears throat> I think the, the media 
in general does a really poor job of sort of conveying how security issues work because it's usually like, oh, there's some guy in a dark room wearing a balaclava trying to hack you and your family and they want to they hack your children and they hate freedom. And <laughs> so, but it's, it's not really like that. You know, these, these website the attacks are opportunistic. They will just go after whatever website they can. You know, they, it's not that they want to hack you necessarily. They just want, you know, they're just going after any site they can, whatever vulnerable site. Um, so with a little bit of uh, developing good security posture, with a little bit of monitoring, a little bit of maintenance, you can turn that sort of boogeyman issue into a, a risk that you can manage and, and respond to, right, in, in a responsible way. Um, so it's, it's, security is, you know, complicated and scary and complex, but the principles are actually very simple, and that's what I want to try to address to you today. Um, so this is what uh, my buddy's site looked like when it was compromised. Um, that's what our site check tool looks like when it finds something nasty on, on your website. Um, so <laughs> security posture, right? What does that even mean? Um, so really, I think it means that security isn't just something that you buy, right? It's a... Uh, it's an attitude. It's, it's a way of approaching a set of problems. Um, let's take a really basic example, OK? Let's say you have a moat with alligators in it, all right? And you've spent a lot of money on this moat, and you're very proud of it, and it keeps out the bad guys, all right? But let's say one night you leave the drawbridge down, and a band of marauding raiders comes in and burns everything to the ground. What the hell was the point of having a moat, right, in the first place if you're just going to you know, leave it open. So um, I actually work with a lot of clients that they have like, you know, four or five security plugins and they have all these services and all this stuff that they've spent money on and they still get hacked. And they think like, my God, why? Why does this keep, keep happening? I have all this security stuff on my site. What, why? And, you know, in these cases, I'm legitimately interested. Like, well, how did you get hacked? And I look in and like log into their environment and I'm like, wait a second this is the same password you were using last time. Like, you, it's still pass one, two, three. Like, you need to change, <laughs> you need to change this. Like, what do you mean, how did I get hacked, right? Um, and so that's an example of, of a poor security posture, right? I see a lot of people just try to throw software at the problem and throw money at the problem and just hope that it makes the hackers go away. But it's not enough, right? You need to be at least a little bit actively involved in, in, the, in your security and, and being aware of the risks, right? Um, so let's take um, another example. Um, let's say like Super Secure Bob, all right? Super Secure Bob has a firewall. He's got an internal uh, intrusion detection system. He's got the best, most expensive antivirus. You know, he's got it all. And then one day, he gets an email from his bank. And it says, hey, we've detected some suspicious activity on your account, and we need you to confirm some, some details with us. And Bob says, oh, man, I don't want anything bad to happen to my bank account. And he logs in, and he gives them all their information. What happened, right? Bob got hacked. And in, in spite of all the money that he spent on security, in spite of every, all the effort that he put in, just one little thing, right? And with security, it always comes down to the weakest link. And in many cases, the weakest link is the victim themselves, right? Um, so <clears throat> security is, is not just something that you purchase. Um, it's it's get, having good habits. It's maintenance, maintaining your site. Uh, it's, it's updating your plugins. It's monitoring your environment. You know, it's, you have to be involved with it a little bit. You can't, and another example, you know, I hear the question asked a lot, like, what is the best antivirus, right? That's a, that's a valid question, and that's a very good question. However, I think it kind of underlines a kind of attitude where people think, well, if I have the best antivirus, then I'm not going to get hacked, right? The hackers will just go away. And unfortunately, uh, that's, it's more complicated than that. Um, you know, these security plugins, you know, uh, antivirus programs, these are tools to help you. There, there are no... Uh, silver bullet security solutions, right? They don't exist. And anyone that tells you that there is a, a silver bullet solution, that this, we're going to make the hackers go away, you're not going to have to worry about it, everything's fine, you know, this is bulletproof, it's not, it's not true. Um, so <clears throat> this quote, I think, perfectly 
uh, encapsulates what I'm trying to say throughout my whole presentation. And this is from the Security Plus training manual for CompTIA, by, and David Prowse wrote it. And basically the short of it is spend more time preventing problems and less time uh, fixing issues that result from a compromise. Malware is a very expensive thing for the, the global economy. It costs tens if not hundreds of billions of dollars um, in, in you know, money spent in, in reformatting servers that have been compromised, in, in maintaining firewalls, in, in you know, even lost money from phishing scams or, or lost uh, intellectual property. Like it, it's endless, right? And it continues to amp up and get more you know, costly. And a lot of these problems can be avoided from, you know, m people are inherently uh, almost, what's the word, reactionary to, to these problems. Like you don't, you don't make a backup of your computer until you've already lost an important file, right? You, and people often don't secure their site until after it's already been hacked, right? I see this all the time. I see it every day at work. Nobody sees, nobody sees it coming. And uh, most of these issues can be prevented. Um, but the issue is uh, being on top of it and being proactive, right? So it's worth mentioning here that there's a common myth that people have that you have to go to sketchy parts of the internet to, to get malware on your computer, right? You know, Bob must have been going to somewhere he shouldn't have, and we all know what I'm referring to, but that's... <laughs> And that may be the case with Bob, but let's give him the benefit of the doubt, at least, <laughs> at least this once, right? Um, I, you know, most of the, if, 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 if that were the case, that you had to go to sketchy sites to get malware, then it wouldn't be such a big problem, because people have generally a good sense about them to, you know, people with good brow browsing habits and, you know, they stay on safe sites and whatever. But I see WordPress sites, you know, d distributing malware too. Um, and, and hackers abuse that trust that your users have in your site to spread malware, right? So the thing about uh, WordPress in particular is that it, it's 20% uh, it's or more of the internet. It's the most commonly used CMS platform. And uh, much in the same way that Windows and Android are the most commonly attacked platforms for end-user computers, WordPress is one of the most commonly attacked platforms for CMS, not because of any inherent flaws that WordPress has, but simply because it's the most commonly used. You know, if you can find an exploit that works on WordPress or works on a popular plugin or theme, you know, that's a lot of money. You know, that's, you can, uh, you can do a lot of damage with that. Um, so, Word, like the developers at WordPress have actually done a really excellent job at making a, a platform that's really easy to use, that's very accessible, and that is actually is quite secure. It has multiple layers of security, and they've done an excellent job at that. Um, but the thing about WordPress, though, is that its greatest strength is its greatest weakness, right? The fact that anyone can contribute to it is is awesome. You know, if, you, if you're a developer, you can write a plugin, you can write a theme that, that thousands of people can use. But the downside of this is that anyone can contribute to it, right? And so some developers might not have the same kind of uh, awareness uh, uh, about security when they're coding. And then only after the fact that you have, you know, 50,000 people using a plugin and then a, a vulnerability is found, you have a big problem on your hands, right? Um, so. Hey, look, it's a guy trying to hack your family. Look at that, with a balaclava and everything. <laughs> so um, why would someone want to hack your site? What are the motivations behind that? Um, we all hear about big hacks like the Sony Pictures and uh, Home Depot and Target and other, like when many credit card numbers have been stolen. You know, those issues are, th those are targeted attacks by very skilled, professional attackers, and they're very high-risk operations, um, but the rewards are so great, right? But with smaller websites, um, think of it from the attacker's perspective, right? Like, hey, wait a minute, if I can hack 1,000 small sites, that's an awful lot like hacking one site that's 1,000 times as big, right? And in some ways, that might actually work more to their benefit, depending on what their goals are, right? Um, but that still doesn't answer the question why. The why is that people hack sites for money. 
How do they make money hacking sites? There's a few different, few different ways this can happen, right? One common thing that we're all, you know, uh, probably aware of are phishing attacks, like you know Bob and his bank. You know, I see a lot of these on WordPress sites when they get compromised. Um, the bad guys will put a fake bank page or a fake Google Drive or a fake iTunes login page buried somewhere deep in WP includes or WP content slash uploads, and you know they can sit there for a long time and go unnoticed. And they'll send out a bunch of emails to people and say, "Hey, log into your bank," and they send send them to your site and on this fake page that you don't even know is there, and they drain as many bank accounts and steal as much money as they can. Um, hopefully, you know, if your bank is half decent, they'll be able to flag some of these you know, transactions as suspicious, but a lot of times that doesn't work. Um, another one is uh, malicious redirects, right? Um, people trust your site, as I mentioned, right? And they don't trust sketchy sites like you know malware.su or whatever. Um, <laughs> so what do they do? They redirect the traffic from your site and they send it over to malware.su. So you know, and sometimes it's you know on, only on specific devices they'll do it. Um, but that's a way that they, in, in this case, that trust that your visitors have in your site is like the vulnerability that they're exploiting, <coughs> right? Um, Another one is, is uh, drive-by downloads, where you know you go to mycoolblog.com and it says you know this site requires you to update Adobe Flash Player in order to view its content, and you're like, well, I'm pretty sure I just updated Adobe Flash Player, but you know I trust mycoolblog.com, so I'm going to click on that. What happens? You get pwned. You get a banking trojan on your computer or something, right? Um, and another one, Black Hat SEO. This is the most annoying of all of them. Um, because this is where the attackers will fill your database with spam links. You know, cheap Viagra, cheap Cialis, cheap Louis Vuitton handbags, cheap NFL jerseys, cheap Oakley sunglasses. I could go on forever, right? Um, and these are really annoying ones to clean because you have to clean out thousands of links and it can be very time consuming. Um, <clears throat> and one more, uh, defacements, like this picture right here, right? Sometimes they're not motivated by money. By and large, they are. Um, but sometimes they just do it for kicks and like they'll deface your page and put a scary image and just kind of for the shock value, right? And they do it for the lulls. Um, but by and large, uh, you know, these attacks are motivated by finances. Uh, malware is very profitable, unfortunately. It rakes in a lot, like all that money that's costing the global economy due to malware, a lot of that is getting siphoned right to the bad guys and that's what motivates these continued attacks. Um, we've seen in the last couple of years especially that these attacks are amping up, they're getting more aggressive, they're getting more organized and um, you know, 10 years ago you probably could have gotten away with having some pretty crappy security on your site and you probably would have been alright. But these days, especially in the last five years, security is something that you need to be aware of when you operate your own website. All right? <clears throat> so, we all want our websites to look cool, have good content, have good pictures, have good, you know, be functional, be easy to use, to load fast, but add security that, to that list, okay? This is a must. Um, you, you need to, you know, as I mentioned, you're responsible as, as a website owner. This is your space, your visitors trust you. Um, so every time you log into your, your WP admin page to, update a post, upload some pictures, whatever, just, you know, check out your security plugin, see what it has to say, see if it's generating any flags, just make a, make a habit of it. You don't have to, you know, spend a tremendous amount of time, you know, security is complicated um, and it can be very overwhelming, but, you know, every time you log in, just check things out, see if there's any modifications, see if there's anything suspicious, any warnings, any flags, just make a habit out of it, right? And the more you do that, um, the more you'll be able to recognize when something's wrong. The, the more familiar you are with your site environment, then the better off you're going to be in the long run. It can, it, can, it can, just even that, understanding to recognize when something is out of place is an important first step in recognizing when something's gone horribly wrong. All right? Um, so it's worth mentioning here, uh, what is poor security posture? All right? So, the first one that I see all the time is people avoiding updates, okay? Um, this is the most catastrophic mistake that you can possibly make. Um, I work, again, you know, lots of clients say, how did I get hacked? How did this happen? 
and I log into their, you know, their environment, and I check it out, and I'm like, well, I don't know, you have like 16 out of date plugins here, that would probably be a good place to start. Um, and, and some people just kind of never, never update it. They, they get their site up and running, and they get it working, and then they just kind of forget about it. Okay, it's working, don't touch it anymore, kind of an attitude, right? Because plugin updates can occasionally break a site, they can sometimes cause issues, right? Um, but by and large, this is the most common problem that I see. So. Uh, updating your site and making a point of doing that in a timely manner and, and making a habit of it and doing it frequently is probably the most important part of developing a good security posture, that you're on top of this, right? Um, also, this is a, pro a problem I see you know, fairly often, is people using pirated software on their sites. Um, there are premium themes, premium plugins that people you know, that people sell, that companies sell, that you can buy 40, 60, 100 bucks, whatever. Um, and then sometimes what the bad guys will do is they'll steal that plugin and they'll add their own code into it and then say, hey, you can download this plugin for free. Yeah, it's usually 60 bucks. Hey, isn't that great? And people say, oh, what a deal. I love free. And they download that and all of a sudden their site's part of a botnet or you know whatever else they want to do to it. Um, so, uh, also, it's kind of a crappy thing to do to the developers because you're stealing their work, so it's disrespectful too. So by and large, this is just a bad idea altogether. Don't use pirated software. Um, also, this is a, a really big problem I see in a lot of different environments. You know, if you, if you just have one WordPress website, it's not a big deal, right? But if you have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 sites, um, it's really easy and convenient to lump them all into the same hosting environment but what happens? When one of those sites gets compromised, they all go down. Every single one of them is gonna get pwned. And it turns uh, something that's probably, could be an easy cleanup job into something that's a really big, expensive mess to fix. Um, so if, you're, if you have multiple websites, you know, separate them. You know, put them into different hosting accounts, different FTP users, different passwords, right? Not, not unlike a, a big ship that you know they compartmentalize it. So if they if the hull leaks, then the whole si the whole ship isn't going to sink. The only part of it's going to fill up with water. Same thing, right? And it's more annoying to have to remember all these passwords and to have to log into different environments all the time when you're working on your sites. Um, but it's worth the extra effort, right? It can save you a tremendous amount of headache uh, in the long run, for sure. Um, and also, I see a lot of people just kind of say, ah, I'm probably not gonna ha get hacked, it's not a big idea, it's not a big deal. And like, yeah, okay, sure. Uh, <laughs> see how long that lasts, like, I wish you luck. Uh, <laughs> so this is really what you wanna avoid seeing on your site, right? This warning from, from Google. This warning is the kiss of death for your website's reputation. I see websites um, where they have you know, tons and tons of visitors and all of a sudden it just drops off to almost zero because nobody's gonna go to your site if they see this warning here, right? And this is what you, this is, this is the, uh, you know, when I'm talking about protecting your site's, you know, your hard work, your reputation, all that, it can take a website a really long time to you know, get back steam from this and, and, and to build up their reputation again. And um, you know, because think of it from your perspective. If you go to mycoolblog.com and it says in it's, in, it's an attack site, are you ever gonna go back there? Maybe not, right? So the more that you consider uh, priority, uh, security a priority from day one, the less likely that this is gonna happen to you, all right? Um, so let's go over some pretty, you know, uh, some more uh, practical stuff, all right? Plugins uh, and, and themes, uh, but basically out, any out of date and vulnerable software is the leading cause of website infection. Um, I see a lot of uh, websites getting hacked uh, today that, you know, they're using plugins that were, you know, two years out of date, where if they had just updated it, this wouldn't have happened. Um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, I scan a lot of sites and I see vulnerable software everywhere, left, right, and center. People use it all the time. So, you know, people get annoyed at having to update because it's time consuming and, you know, it, it's, a, it's a chore. Um, but by and large, this is the best thing that you can do. Um, actually, in, my, in that uh, Security Plus uh, textbook I was qu quoted earlier, he actually mentions that it's a good idea to treat your computers, and, uh, or, or in this case, your website, as your friend or pet, 
right? Um, it sounds a bit weird, but he says like, well, AI is just around the corner. We might as well get started now. You know, think of those plugin updates as like you're, you know, you're petting your pet. You're spending time with it. You're loving it. You know, like, <laughs> it sounds weird, but it's a good way of approaching this problem, right? Um, <clears throat> and that's not just with your your website either. I mean, it's your browser. Um, like, oh, I don't want to update Firefox. I just want to use Facebook. It's like, these, these updates are there to help you, right? They're, they have your back. They're your friend, all right? Um, and also, it's really important to use as few plugins as possible on your site. Only go with what is absolutely necessary. I see some people, um, like I said, they have like four security plugins, they have three SEO plugins, they have this, they have that, and there's like 20 of them or 30 of them there. Uh, every piece, consider every piece of software on your site as a potential risk, all right? Um, so only have one piece of, one plugin for one thing and update them, have as few as possible, only use what's absolutely necessary. And the security jargon for this is decreasing the attack surface, all right? <clears throat> also, um, sometimes you'll go to download a plugin that says, hey, just so you know, this plugin hasn't been updated in like two years, so heads up, avoid those ones, all right? Oh, and also if you have like 60 plugins on your site, it's probably gonna load slow, so uh, there's other benefits too. Um, so passwords, all right? This is the other leading cause of infection. Um, people using really weak, easily brute forced, easily guessed passwords. Um, now, the, the most uh, common thing, uh, common way that they're compromised is through brute force attacks, all right? So they'll, uh, the attackers will write bots, write scripts that will go to your WP admin page and they'll try every possible password, starting with the most common ones, all right? Pass123, change me123, et etc. et cetera. Um, so by and large, that tends to be how it happens. Um, but it can happen through other things too. Like say you have a, a Trojan on your computer, from the, the computer that you administer your site from. They can swipe it from there and then you change your password and they'll just get the new one if your computer's infected. You know, you have to have a secure workstation that you operate your site from. That's important. Or maybe you're working on your website from, you know, a cafe and you're using an unencrypted protocol like FTP and there's some hacker like sniffing the traffic and they can just grab it like that. Or you write your password on a post-it note and you stick it on your computer and you walk away. <laughs> you know, there's all sorts of different ways that this can happen, all right? Um, so basically the, uh, the general rule is that the more annoying and inconvenient it is for you to type, the more difficult and inconvenient <laughs> it's gonna be for the bad guys to compromise your site, right? Um, so, backups. Backups are probably the most overlooked uh, part of, the, uh, of security for websites. A lot of people don't know how to back up their sites, they, or they don't, uh, they don't have any service that's doing it for them. Um, so, th these backups are really important to have. Um, if something goes wrong on your site and you, you, know, you get hacked, you don't know how to clean it up, everything's going wrong, you know, if you have a recent backup that you can just revert to, Problem solved. Easy, right? You just go back there, change your passwords, update your stuff, you're golden. Um, but in most cases, people don't have this available, right? Um, and this, can, this is one of those things that can, uh, can really save you a lot of headache in the long run. Um, I, I do know that, uh, I, I do see a lot of people that are storing their backups on their server. For example, they'll just copy all their files and put it into a subdirectory called old or back. Uh, and the problem with that is that you know, that's, that's accessible on your site publicly, and that's a whole bunch of out-of-date software that's never getting touched again. Um, and also, like, what's the point of having a, a backup from 2012 sitting on your server? You're never gonna use it again. So, you know, update these, uh, store them offline in a, in a safe place, or have some sort of um, backup service that, that's gonna do it for you, all right? Um, so what are some more practical steps that you can take to avoid this, right? Uh, as I was mentioning, old software, update, um, but also, I think it's important to use a, a security plugin of some sort. Um, there's a lot of them available. We have one for monitoring. Uh, there's also plugins like WordFence and iThemes that are pretty popular. There are other security plugins that you can use too. Um, but 
no matter what you do, just make sure that you have like that you're using something, all right? Um, have some sort of security service, uh, there, whether it's free or paid. You know, have have something there that's going to be helping you monitor your site. That's going to give you warnings that will help you determine when something's out of place. Because the, really, it's difficult to do this all yourself, right? And there are plenty of tools uh, available to you to uh, to help help this, right? Um, so, also, what else can you do? Um, uh, default settings for software are inherently insecure, right? And that's not just with WordPress sites or whatever. This is just for any kind of software, okay? Um, so uh, basically, the more configuration changes and the more you can edit your, your site to make it more secure, the more tweaks you can put in there, that's going to make it less uh, easy for, for the bad guys to hack your site, okay? Um, so. One, one example I think that's really good is exercising the, again, some more security jargon here, the, privilege, uh, the uh, principle of least privilege. Um, one thing that's really great about WordPress is that you can have, you know, it can be a collaborative kind of project. You know, you can have multiple people working on it from different places and in, in all over the world. Um, but the problem is that the easiest way to do this is just to make a new admin account and just add them, right? And I see a lot of sites where they have like six or 10 or 12 website administrators. And like that's six or 10 or 12 vulnerabilities on your site. Because if any one of those admin accounts gets compromised, your site's going down, right? So if you need to give someone access to your WP admin page, only give them the, the minimum amount of privileges that they need and only give them access uh, for the period of time in which they need to, to use it and then revoke it. You know, a little bit of paranoia is going to help you in the long way. It's a good thing, trust me. Um, also, there are some tweaks to uh, your WP config file that you can make that makes WordPress both more secure and more annoying to use. For example, uh, disallow file edit. You know, this can make it a little bit more cumbersome to work with your site, but it's also going to make it more cumbersome for the bad guys to, uh, to exploit it and to make modifications and to change it. And WordPress, in their, uh, their, uh, on the wiki there, they have a whole list of different tweaks that you can make to it. And I'd suggest checking that out. Um, and also, um, it's a really good idea if every so often, just occasionally, just verify that the file permissions are set correctly on your server. Um, a lot of people, when they're setting up their, their WordPress environments, um, They'll, they'll say, oh, just set everything to 777. Yeah, everything will work. It'll be super easy. And yeah, it'll, everything will work, but everything is going to be publicly writable, too. Um, and that there, are some, you know, there are some really easy ways that you can make your site super not secured, and that's one of them. Um, so by and large, just 644 or 755 for files and directories, respectively, um, is something that you'll want to verify on your server. Um, now, uh, I also presented at... Uh, at WordCamp Vancouver. Um, and I had a lot of people ask me, like our, our security uh, Sakuri scanner plugin will uh, notify you if your site is being brute forced. And sometimes people get all these emails about, hey, there's a, a failed login, failed login, failed login, failed login. And they're like, how do I stop this? Right? How do I prevent these guys from getting into my WP admin page? And that's an excellent question. Um, if you have a firewall on your site, then I can do it for you. But there are some other ways that you can, you can make it more secure. Um, first of all, the most important is to not use the name uh, admin as your admin, uh, right? Because that's the one the bad guys always check. Uh, that's the one they always brute force with first. Um, other things like, you know, don't, don't make it your domain name. You know, if, uh, if your website is mycoolblog.com, your administrator name shouldn't be mycoolblog. That's also something that's pretty easily guessable, right? So something that's you know, harder to remember, for example, would be good. Um, <clears throat> another thing that you can do is uh, use a CAPTCHA on your WP admin page. Um, that's, that's gonna, so you have to verify if you're a robot or not before you log in. By and large, most of these attacks are, are automated, and they're done by bots. They're done by scripts. They're not actual like you know humans sitting there typing every possible password that they can think of. That would be way too time consuming. Um, so you can put that on your WP admin page, and that'll probably fix most of those brute force attempts, right? Um, also, um, restricting access 
uh, to your WP admin page by IP address is a really effective way that you, you can do this. Um, this actually HT access file right here is doing just that. You have, it's denying all traffic except from these four IP addresses. So say this is home, that's work, that's my buddy Joe, and you know this is some cafe that I like to go to sometimes and work on my site. And if anyone is coming from any other IP address, it's going to get blocked. Um, so these can be a little bit annoying because a lot of IP addresses are dynamic. They change every so often. And you have to update this. So it's not exactly convenient. But unfortunately, security isn't always convenient. Uh, but this can, this can really help prevent a lot, a lot of those attacks. Um, now, even if you are if you have all these restrictions in place, you're using security software, you know, this is not an excuse to stop monitoring your environment. Because there's no, as I said, there's no perfect security solution. The bad guys can still get in sometimes. Um, so you know, even if you're using some you know, great security services, you know, still monitor your environment. You can't give up your security posture, even if you think you're safe, right? So uh, here I have. Uh, just a screen capture of our, our plugin you can download for monitoring. It'll tell you who's logging in, from where, you know, at what time, if there's any, been any changes to your uh, you know, core files. And uh, you know, I'm, uh, other security plugins like WordFence and iThemes and stuff, they can do this stuff too, right? You're not restricted just to this, but um, you know, you'll, you'll want to use some sort of plugin that's going to be a good tool to help you monitor your environment. Um, so what if something goes wrong? All right, what do you do? So this does happen, um, and most of the, a lot of clients that I work with get super worried, they get stressed, they get anxious, they feel vulnerable, oh my god, I've been hacked, what do I do, what do I do, how did this happen, who did this, ah. And it is really stressful, all right? Uh, but if you have a good security posture from the very beginning, that you approach this with a good attitude from you know, all the way through, from the very beginning to the very end, um, it's less likely to, to, be, to happen, but if it does, you know, say you have a, a backup that you made yesterday. Hey, cool, I'll just you know, do that, restore, done. So if you are proactive, then this is when you appreciate all that work you've put into it, right? Um, but it's good to remember that no matter what happens, every problem has a solution, and there are people there to help you. Um, WordPress, of course, has an excellent, awesome community of people that are, are there to help you. There are forums, there are you know, services that you can get, like whatever. There's, there's always going to be a way out of this. It's not the end of the world. Um, so also I see sometimes uh, a lot of people, especially with blogs and stuff, their most recent uh, update on their, on their website is, hey, everyone, uh, I got hacked. My site was hacked. Like, just so you know, I'm just disclosing this. Like, just in case, um, you know, do uh, perform a scan of your computer with an antivirus program just in case. And you know, hey, maybe some of your visitors haven't scanned their site uh, or haven't scanned their computer with an antivirus program in like six months, and they're like, oh yeah, maybe I should do that. So it could help, maybe help them. And so um, I, uh, I have talked a lot about how um, you know there's malware lurking around every corner. Oh, be vigilant, be aware, and you know, kind of may, might make you feel like you don't want to use the internet anymore. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there are some things that you can do to secure your browser uh, and, and your computer from these attacks. You know, in, in acknowledging that uh, you know, every, you know, any site can be compromised, um, we need to act accordingly. Okay? So have an antivirus program. Uh, and uh, you know, I even if you have a Mac, scan it regularly, all that good stuff. Um, there's, uh, you know, having good browsing habits, not clicking on any suspicious links that you, you know, find in your email account. Um, you know, not not saying like, hey, I wonder if such and such dot com is a website. I'm going to go there. Uh, you know, having good browsing habits is really important. Um, and also, um, there are some security extensions that that you can use on on in your browser to prevent. Like even if you do go to a malicious website, they can still, you know, uh, they they can help prevent these attacks. The thing I would recommend more than anything is no script um, or, or a script blocker. Um, these are going to, this is a plugin that can help you, that will prevent malware from actively attacking you. Um, and so, as a security analyst, that's probably the most important tool that I use on a day to day basis, in, in especially since you know, I'm working with infected websites all the time. And, and uh, 
also. Uh, ad block's really good. You know, I know that there is a big debate about like advertising revenue and sites and ad block and how that affects that. That's a very legitimate debate to be had. Um, but strictly from a, a security perspective, you know, a lot of a lot of times people get malware through through the ads. Um, like an advertising network can get compromised, and malware can be pushed through there, right? And so, you know, just don't take any chances. It's better to just you know prevent this stuff from happening with, when possible. Um, and HTTPS everywhere, using en encryption is important. Actually, my, my buddy at Malwarebytes, JP, uh, he wrote a really good article on the Malwarebytes blog about how to secure uh, your browser. Um, and I'd recommend that you all read that. It's a really good walkthrough of how you can, how you can amp up your security and make it a little bit safer to browse the web. Um, <clears throat> so sometimes these, these uh, extensions and, and add-ons can make it a little bit more inconvenient to browse the web. Um, but by and large, uh, they're, they're really important tools to use, and I, I would recommend every one of you look into this. Um, now, I just want to spend uh, a little bit of time talking about the visitor tracker. Um, this is uh, an infection that's been going around over the last uh, couple of weeks, and this is a very, really dangerous organized campaign infecting many thousands of WordPress sites. Actually, our queue has been super busy since this, is, this has been started. Um, so you know, you see the attacks going up, and just in the last couple of days, it's really skyrocketed. Um, so the interesting thing about this particular infection and this particular malware campaign is that it's not really limit to, lim limited to any particular vulnerability in any particular plugin and theme. It seems to be an organized campaign of their scanning as many WordPress sites as they possibly can, looking for whatever vulnerabilities they can, and infecting them. And it's happening en masse. Um, and the really crappy thing about this is that the end goal is, uh, in many cases, is to redirect the visitors uh, to your site to nuclear exploit kit landing pages. And a lot of cases, this is infecting people with CryptoLocker ransomware, like the you know, worst possible kind of malware that you can get, where you're locked out of, out of your computer. Um, and uh, as of a few days ago, Google has been blacklisting every single site that ha has this code found on it. So this is a really bad infection. And this you know, is, is a, just another reminder about why you need to have a good security posture when, when you have a, a, a website. All right. So uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, bonus cat, right? Uh, and yeah, that's my uh, presentation on building a better security posture. Thank you. So uh, question time. Yay, question time. You had your hand up first. Yay. <laughs> so I'm sure that the question you get asked all the time is, you know, which plugin should I use? Um, the three that you mentioned, <coughs> is there any reason to have all three of them installed? Like, you know how those of us who just don't really know what's going on in security just, just pile them on, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I wouldn't recommend just, like I mentioned, you shouldn't throw software at the problem. Like. I wouldn't recommend having like four or five, but I would recommend maybe having one or two, as long as they're not, as long as they don't have the same functionality, they're not trying to do the same thing, right? Like for example, like our uh, Sakuri scanner plugin doesn't really have any active protection component to it. It's just for monitoring. So I would recommend mixing that with say WordFence or iThemes, and you can use both, like one for some extra monitoring, one that has some active protection component to it. Um, but I wouldn't recommend, say, like purchasing multiple security services that all have active protection that are all, you know, like not only is it not particularly useful, but it's also very inconvenient because you can easily lock yourself out of your site and you're not sure which plugin is, has, is doing it, right? Um, so yeah, you can use a couple for sure, but I wouldn't go overboard. Right. Yeah. Uh, you. So the, uh, the free website malware security scanner that you've got online, can that be run like automated? Can it automate that? Uh, that's a good question. Um, it, it does, I think with, I think iThemes recently included it in their, in their uh, software. Yeah, yeah, um, and so yeah, you could use that. Um, and if you have, if you, you know, if you're a client of ours, that it'll do that automatically. Um, but other than that, I don't think there's any way to, to automate it on a regular basis. But yeah, you can check out iThemes. Um, who's? I think I've seen you. You've raised your hand a little while ago, so. Yeah. What does Black Hat SEO infection actually do? 
um, as, a, as a consequence or? Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's pretty bad for your site's reputation, yeah. right? Um, what will happen is, like, say you've spent a lot of time working on the SEO for your site to make sure that you get up there in search results. Um, once Google recognizes that your site is now affiliated with cheap Viagra links and, you know, buycialis.com or whatever, then Google doesn't like that. And so you get, all of a sudden, you start going down in search results and you have to go to your third page. So it's bad for your, your website's SEO and reputation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you know uh, a plugin for a plugin that will change all the administrator's password every six months or whatever time I have to configure? To remind you that you know um, your, your, your user has been over three months, now you have to change it. Right. So, so especially for a website that has many, many administrators for managing. Right. Uh, you change your name, your top question, your top name, your name. Yeah. That's actually that's a very good question, and I, I hate to say it, but I don't know of a particular plugin that, that has that. But I, I think I, if you talk to me after the, the, the talk, I'll uh, I'll get your contact info and I'll see if I can find an answer for you. There's probably there's got to be something out there. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, I could I suggest that to our developers and see if we could get it added to our plugin too. That's a good idea. Um, but yeah, I'll I'll try to I'll try to find an answer for you. And your second question. Uh, well, with WP Engine, we actually help with their security, like for their sites. Um, and so um, if, if your host already has a managed security solution, you probably don't need to buy uh, anything separate. Like if, if they're already taking care of stuff for you, you're already paying a premium for it, there's not really any reason to buy it twice. You know, like at the end of the day, all you'd have to do is ask your host, like, what are you going to do if my site gets hacked? Different hosting providers act in very different ways. Sometimes they'll put your site offline and expect you to fix it yourself. Sometimes they don't do anything. Sometimes they'll do it all for you. And it really depends on what host you're using, what plan you have with them. Um, so I would follow up with your host and get them to confirm exactly what they would do in the event that something goes wrong. And if they say, yeah, we have your back, don't worry, we'll get it cleaned up for you, you don't have to buy anything extra. But if there's some you know, responsibility still on, depending on your plan, depending on your host, um, if, there's some, if the onus is on you to some degree, you might want to consider it. Um, but I'm pretty sure with WP Engine, they've got it sorted. Yeah. yeah, you're covered. <laughs> <coughs> Yeah. Uh, are you familiar with fail to ban? With which? Fail to ban. Fail to ban. I can't, not off the top of my head, no. Okay, we, well, okay. Our business is we run voice servers, and it's what we use to keep people out. Uh, we can set the number of invalid access attempts, like three, five, two, whatever, and then we can ban that IP for a period of time. Right. And what it does is what we see is that it stops the people who are running bots. I mean, after they try enough time to figure, okay, we're not getting in there, they just go away. Yeah. Although sometimes we see them try and they wait out the time and they come back again. Yeah, what I've seen, um, like with, uh, I, I read re recently <coughs> with WordFence, the, uh, the, the default setting is 20 failed logins and then at, at the 20th one, they'll ban it, right? So what do the attackers do? They do 19 and then they wait and then they try again, right? Clever. Uh, so, uh, yeah, those types of services for like the n number of failed logins, are, I would recommend everyone use one for sure, and that can be another way to help brute force attempts. It, it failed to ban, is that just a, a plugin that will, will a Linux, limit them? It's a, it's a Linux server-side. Oh, server-side. Yeah, okay, that's cool. We, we have to because otherwise we, we, I mean, we, would, we would have to like, we have to link things with, with IP addresses where we have customers who, believe it or not, will not pay $5 a month to have a static IP. <laughs> yeah. Therefore, they, therefore, they, they have the IP changed in the month. And guess what? They can't. All the phones go off one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it can be annoying, but uh, I mean, anytime you're dealing with banning IPs, there can be a little bit of collateral damage. But by and large, I definitely recommend doing it still for sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, you had your hand up there.
Well, it's a double-edged sword, right? Because on one hand, um, you, you can efficiently update all your stuff, but then if that account gets compromised, then the, all, they're all going down, right? Kind, kinda. I mean, if you if you have a, a really good, if you're employing other good practices and have good security posture in other say in other ways, um, like if if you have a, a configuration like that and you leave it vulnerable, then I wouldn't recommend it. But if you are, you know, uh, say uh, restricting access by IP and you have you know some security plugins that you're using, you have complex passwords, you're not giving admin access out like candy. You know, it's probably all right because if you have like 20 sites. Man, like going into each and every one of them and updating them, it takes like, it's a marathon, you know? So at some point, you kind of have to use something like that. Um, I might also recommend looking into a multi site configuration, it's not a bad idea, too. I know, like, Infinite WordPress, you can have it hosted on a server, but you can also have it hosted, like, globally on your machine. Does that change the way that you do it? Like, uh, locally on your, in the machine out of your living room? Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that because what you have to do then is you have to forward port 80 on your router to that, to your local server. And that's basically opening up your home network to attacks, right? So I, I wouldn't recommend doing that. It's probably best to stay away from that kind of configuration, as cheap as it may be. Yeah. Uh, yes? If you are hacked and you're going back to a, a backup, do you recommend going through and completely deleting everything? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, the good thing about a backup is that it helps you avoid having to do that because um, you can go back to uh, a configuration that's known to be safe. But you're just backing up, I'm not a developer, you're just, back, you're just backing up your site, you're not backing up the WordPress install and everything. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, you, you'd encompass everything, right? And that's what, same, uh, if, say, if you were switching hosting providers and you wanted to move your website over, you'd have to do the same thing. So you get a copy of your, your files and a copy of your database. And that's your whole site, that's everything. That's your plugins, your settings, your core files. Um, and but so. If you move, you're still reinstalling WordPress. Uh, well, uh, if, you mean if you move to like a, a new host? Well, if you, if you already have a database set up, like, yeah, there's some new configurations that you have to do on the new, on the new host. But by and large, if you're doing it, that saves you the installation process and the headache of all that. Um, and same thing if you're reverting to a backup if you've, if you've been hacked. The only thing I'd, I'd also uh, mention is that a lot of times um, the attackers will, the attacks go in different stages. Like, they'll do some reconnaissance and, and they'll, you know, compromise it. And then they'll wait a little while and then they'll push the malware, right? So if you go to a backup that's, you know, say, two days old, they might have already placed a backdoor on there weeks ago that you just didn't know about. Keep a series of backups. Yes. Yes, do it regularly. Um, and so, you know, if one doesn't work, then you can go back to another one. I actually wrote a, a blog article at blog.sukuri.net on, on how to create backups if you're not familiar with it. And I've wrote down all the steps and stuff. And it's all, it's all there. That's where? On your blog? On Sukuri.net? Yeah, at blog.sukuri.net. I think it was pushed a, a week or two ago. It should be on the front page still. Yeah. So WordPress powers 24% of the internet. continues to grow. It's a big target. In your opinion, is the WordPress security posture improving or getting worse? Uh, whose posture? The core itself. Core. Well, I think I mean the core is pretty secure by and large. Like there's still some some vulnerabilities found every now and then. That's just the nature of software, right? Um, but uh, I, I do admit, as a security professional, I do feel like a bit of a broken record sometimes of telling people to change their passwords, change your passwords, update your stuff, update your stuff, and that's what I mean. Like. Um, when I said earlier that, that uh, the, the, the principles of security are actually quite simple, even though it's really quite a difficult, uh, you know, scary issue. Um, I think that there is an increased awareness gradually, maybe not going as quickly as we might like. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think that it's slowly growing and, and, you know, the more sites that get attacked, the more people are going to be aware of it, right? So I think, you know, we're slowly getting towards a, a more uh, you know, responsible, good posture, especially now that we have more businesses using WordPress, right? And money's at stake, and every, you know, hour that your site is offline, you're losing thousands of dollars. So I think with that comes a better security posture. Um, but I, I would prefer that, that, nevertheless, that people be more proactive about it and, and worry about it ahead of time instead of after, after the fact. Cool. Any, anyone else? Yeah. I was asked this question last night by a client. I didn't know how to answer it. She 
said, you know, I have this tiny little business that nobody knows about. Why would somebody want to hack my website? Uh, it's it's a uh, it's a target just like any other. You know, um, there's no. It's regardless of content, you know, um, I see websites that are hacked anywhere from anything from businesses to yoga studios to blogs to churches to universities, like everything. Yeah, and we all know that. But what, what is, I mean, because you're in this business, so why are they doing this? What is the end goal? I mean, if it was to get a million credit card numbers, I'd get it. But to hack into, you know, this cat website, what, is, what are they gaining? Um, <clears throat> well, this Other than maybe bragging rights. Well, yeah, bragging rights sometimes, but by and large, it's mostly money. Like they can abuse your site to to make money, and like I, I mentioned earlier, like yeah, like the black hat SEO stuff, the phishing attempts, the the drive-by downloads, the redirecting your stuff. There is a, a hundred and one different ways that you can misuse a, a site. So yeah, just the fact that it's online and people are going to it doesn't matter if it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, or a thousand visitors a week or a month. You know, it's something. And if they can, if they can hack a thousand small websites, then they can have quite a big impact and make a lot of money doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a server guy, so I installed, a, I set up a server uh, with DigitalOcean, and I on purpose didn't firewall it. I wanted to see something. Within six <laughs> hours, it was under attack. Yep. Yeah. With it, literally six hours, it, just, it was under attack. I didn't tell anybody about it. It had nothing on it, but I wanted to see. Six hours, of, it was under attack. You didn't have WordPress installed yet? Nothing, no. Just, it was on, it was running, no firewall. It's just a new IP that's new available. IP, that's, yeah, that's they all, scan, find it, yeah. First they scan, they find, and it's under attack. Yeah, they do it actively. Like, they, they have bots running 24-7 looking for, looking for sites and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think you had your hand up first. The gentleman's question about why they do it. Um, I've been in IT for 15 years, mostly server and Linux and Windows. The majority of the guys that do it, they do, the majority are from China. <laughs> and, and so there's, there's two levels it's the server level, and there's your, your website level. Um, I just ban all the IPs in the HD access file from Asia. That stops them at that level. The Ultra Band is a good product. It's free. It's open source. I get about between 150 and 200 uh, times every day. Uh, change your, uh, change your uh, main user ID. Yeah, for sure. Men don't use root. Yeah, yeah. Your question about why they do it. They do it because it, it's fun. Like, I got hacked once in a Windows box. But, um, they just stored files on the on the boxes. It wasn't hard, it wasn't bad stuff. They just stored a whole bunch of files for the software. You know, and and probably they, you know, they were using it as a torrent. Uh, right. Download area, right? Well sometimes they do it for fun. It's like they hack your 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 box, they hack your PC, they took your scan, they just hack your piece of work files. Yeah, well, I think uh, like a lot of the times, if you have a country where they have uh, you know decent network infrastructure, okay internet speed, decent technical college, but poor employment prospects for young people, <laughs> it's kind of a bad situation, right? You know, it's like, well, I could, you know, if if you're a young person that has really good skills, you know, if you can make some money hacking sites and you can't get a job where you live, what are you going to do, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. That would help. <laughs> cool. Right on. Thank you.